Welcome back to my series Apps of the Trade and today we're looking at a payware sort of as a, uh, an app that actually costs a couple of dollars um, uh, not that much so we're on we're talking under ten dollars um, unfortunately I can't remember what the price was uh, and I can't get it I can't see it when I have bought it um, but uh, it's not that expensive and it's the Sporty's E6P flight computer. It's basically an app that uh, gives you um, all kinds of, of tools uh, to look at. And, oh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so this is, this actually I didn't want to have that. Can we stop this again? Thank you, oops. <laughs> I think I, I broke the connection, hang on. So I'm starting E6B and I have to reconnect my iPad again. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's the Sporty's E6B flight computer. And I think I can even make this a little bit bigger. Yes, I can, why didn't I do this before? So uh, what you see here is um, quite a, a yeah, a, Big app. It's, it it contains an awful lot of of uh, functionality. Uh, you can actually collect certain things that you use more often in your favorite section. So, for example, top of descent calculation, pounds to kilograms, um, that kind of thing. I've put into uh, my favorites so that I can more quickly access them. So, for example, if I want to see what 100 pounds are, uh, they are 45.36 kilograms, for example, or the top of descent. Um, there you give, for example, a ground speed, let's say 400 knots. You can read this on your PFD, for example, in the Boeing. Indicated altitude is currently 33,000 feet. We want to go to the target altitude of, of 10,000 feet, which is a 23,000 feet uh, drop. And uh, we want to do it in the kind of standard rate of 1800 uh, feet per minute. And that means that our top of descent should start 85.2 miles, roughly 85 nautical miles, from uh, away from the point where we need to be at 10,000. So uh, there are other ways of calculating this more quickly and probably not as accurately, but uh, you know. It's not that important, but still, uh, this is very, very easy. You just enter your current parameters and uh, there you've got it. You don't need to concentrate on, on calculating things. I know it's always better if you can do it, if you can calculate stuff yourself. So let's have a look at all the functionality. And I told you this is an awful lot. So you can, for example, look at pressure density, um, altitude, pressure and density altitude, uh, because altitude is not e equal to altitude. There's a pressure altitude and there's a density altitude. Uh, if I explain you everything we have in here, we're going to be here for an hour. So I'm just quickly browsing through what there is. Crosswind, headwind and tailwind. You can actually calculate the crosswind component or a tailwind component. So for example, if the wind direction is uh, um, let's say uh, wind direction is 220, the wind speed is let's say 10 knots and the runway number is uh, 18. Then we have a crosswind of 6.4, a crosswind component of 6.4 and a headwind in knots of 7.7 .7 knots. That is, uh, headwind is always good, okay. If that becomes a negative number, I think it's not so good. Let's see if I can simulate this, for example, by going um, to runway nine. Um, then we have a tailwind. Tailwind is not so good and there is a maximum tailwind that uh, each aircraft can uh, uh, is, is, is certified for and you shouldn't exceed whatever the maximum tailwind component. Also, by the way, crosswind component is for your aircraft because uh, it's a safety feature, obviously in real life, definitely. Cloud base, uh, uh, what does it do? Outside air temperature, dew point. I'm not actually sure what, what, what we calculate here, cloud base in feet, outside temperature. Let's, yeah, let's take Munich. So we had um, 14 and dew point 10. 
Oops. 10. No. It's a little bit difficult with the with the air manager. It's, it's a little, little bit reluctant. So the cloud base would be at 1636. Uh -huh. I, I didn't know that you can calculate it like that. Hmm. Not sure what that is. You see, I'm not a pilot, so I can't explain everything that we have in here. Uh, plant true airspeed, heading and ground speed, lag time. So if you take the distance and the ground speed, it will tell you how long it takes you. So for example, if you have a distance of 150 nautical miles and you're flying 400 uh, knots, uh, then it takes you 22 minutes to fly these 150 nautical miles, for example. The fuel required, now that depends very much on your um, on your aircraft, but uh, this is very simple actually. They, if you know what your fuel burn is, let's say we're burning, um, oh, that's in liters, uh, let's, oh God, no, yeah. let's assume we are burning 100 liters an hour and we fly 22 minutes and we would burn 37.5 liters. Now that are simple calculations you could probably uh, do yourself plant Mach number required true airspeed required calibrated airspeed the endurance so you give the fuel in liters I, I think you can switch the the units anyway so not up here yep uh, so Celsius millibars and uh, so they only have liters okay Pretty typical European and gallons for US um, percent mean aerodynamic short mm -hmm whatever that is yeah i'm not through all of these yet <laughs> so from time to time i pick one of them that i don't know and then i try to kind of understand what they do fuel per hour so everything now with fuel now very handy is the whole conversion section so for example the liter to um to kilogram let's see liters to gallons celsius nautical miles pounds to kilogram gallons to liters and uh, uh -huh. weight and balance what can we do here now where are the conversions now let's open ah we need an aircraft profile for that i haven't so what you can do is also you can create aircraft profiles this i think is mainly um, intended to be used in general aviation aircraft so small aircraft but uh, yeah and you would know all your parameters you could enter a profile here uh, we can have a quick look i haven't done that yet so uh, here's your basic empty weight in pounds the aircraft cg and maximum takeoff weight maximum landing weight and maximum zero fuel weight and uh -huh weight per moment and so on so you so give some some basic parameters and then you you give uh, the rear seat the baggage the baggage too so uh, with this it can calculate the center of gravity and stuff like that there's also timer so when you press here this is basically a, um, a stopwatch a, a countdown count up and you also get zulu time at the moment it's 1822 zulu at home uh, it's 1822 and local is also 1822. Yeah, that's probably because it doesn't know where I am <laughs> because it's not quite right. We are two hours actually um, ahead of uh, UTC. Then we have a calculator. <laughs> that is just a simple calculator, but you'd be surprised how often you would need something like that. And then there are some settings um, that you can uh, turn on. Um, and yeah, so really, really nifty very handy tool okay you can always call up the calculator also from up here and the stopwatch because this is the kind of tool that you would probably use uh, quite a bit and uh, yeah i've already created a couple of profiles that i actually don't use i need to really go into this and see if i can set up let's say something for the cessna for the standard cessna or something like that so that's the Sporty's E6B. As I say, it costs money, but it is not that expensive. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I use it quite a lot, actually. Um, every time I need to calculate little things uh, in my simulator, uh, I usually call that up and quickly hack it in, and, and then I have my values. So although it costs money, it is one of the 
really practical things that I have here on my iPad. Okay, that's it. The E6B from Sporties. Sporties, by the way, is a, a large uh, store of chain, uh, chain of stores uh, in in the US uh, with all kinds of pilot uh, stuff that you can buy there. So Sporties is quite well known in the US, um, and uh, I'm not sure actually whether they have also shops and and stuff here in Europe. Okay, that's it. Until next time. Bye.